Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. I am back from a sabbatical, if you will, and hiatus, if you will, a slight vacation, if you will. Hope everybody's out there having a good one. This is your boy, Stevie Ray, and this is Straight Shooting with Stevie Ray, the world's most dangerous podcast. And we're back, and I'm here, and I'm anxious to hear what you got to say about what you got to say. What's up, Lawman? What's up, Matthew? They're in the house already. And I'm also live on Facebook. I'm also live on YouTube. What's up, Queen? I'm also live on Twitch as we speak. Now, with all of that being said, it's been a lot of things going down since I was not around the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to just let y'all know. I've just been kind of burnt out on a lot of things. But I'm re-energized now. Now it's time to get down. Now it's time to talk about it. It's time to be about it. It's time to shoot it straight. But that's what we do. That is what we do. Now, what's it on you guys' mind? I'm interested to hear. On top of that, look at this smile on my face, y'all. Look at this smile. What y'all think I'm smiling about? Look at that smile. But yes. Hold on, guys. There we go. But like I said, man, I'm smiling because y'all seen what my Pittsburgh Steelers went out there and did, man. Did you see it? What's up, Big Buddha? Lama, did you see it? At first, I was kind of unhappy. And then Saturday afternoon, I got real happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But before we get into all of that, man, I lost one of my good friends in the wrestling business, man. I'm Mr. Mike Jones. You guys know him as Virgil over the years, man, and over uh, close to – a couple of weeks ago, man, we found out another another trooper from the ring, man, had gone to that big ring in the sky. And, uh, hey, man, he's going to be missed. And we sent our condolences out to him. Me and Mike had some good times together back in the day doing the NWO thing, man. I mean, we really had a lot of fun, man. Cause he and I used to go out and represent the NWO. You know what, what we used to call back then the NWB team. So who, he and I used to go out and do the tag matches against different people representing the NWO. As you well know, some of the NWO guys like Hogan and, and Nash and Hall and a bunch of the guys, not all of them, but a bunch of them. They didn't even want to do house shows anymore. So we had to go out and do the house shows. I'm going to tell you something, man. We had some fun, man. Me, him, Brian Adams, and also Scott Norton, man, and sometimes Horace. So we would have to do these things on the road together. So we really got a chance to really, you know, hang out, have fun, things of that nature, man. So we just want to send our condolences out to Mike and his family, man. And, uh, Give him the respect that he uh, deserves because a lot of people are, 
a lot of people, you know, I, um, I put a post out of he and I on social media. And somebody, uh, somebody tagged me on Instagram post and say, what did you do for him? What I can't remember exactly what the words were, but they were like, well, what, what did you, cause I was sending my condolences, uh, picture he and I, um, Somebody asked, well, well, what did you do for him uh, when he was in his situation or something like that? And what I responded was, I said, what he and I shared was private. But I do remember sending some money. And I don't really tell people stuff like this, but I'll just tell you guys because he was a friend of mine. When his GoFundMe page went up, I sent money to it. Because as you guys really know, I don't really communicate with a lot of the guys that I used to work with other than, you know, on social media every now and then, this, that, and the other. For the last year or so, I haven't been doing conventions and stuff like that. So I really don't communicate with my ex-contemporaries other than a couple. But uh, I knew he was doing bad and somebody set up a GoFundMe page for it. So I put some, I put some money on and I really don't tell people when I do things like that. Well, I tell you guys, but at the end of the day, like I told this person, I got a better question. What did you do? Other than a bunch of fans, privileged ass fans that like to laugh and excoriate people behind their backs. And you got the unmediated gall to ask me, what did I do? That's what I said. So you better realize who you talking to because I'm that brother that don't slide so easy. So it's easy for fans these days to not have any respect for a person that goes out there and busts his ass in a business that you can't possibly understand unless you've been in this business. It's easy to get on board and, and make fun of people and talk about them like shit behind their back because in your culture, that's what they teach you. In your privileged culture, yeah, go laugh at the monkey in the cage because you a bitch made pussy. And you got the nerve to ask me something like that. So that's what I said. And anybody else that's got some smart shit to say, I'm your man. Because I don't, I don't walk it. I talk it. I live it. So it's easy to do shit like that when everybody else jump on board just like little kids. But yeah, I seen Virgil, uh, I seen him at the deal. He put his own table up, man, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And I remember this talk show somebody had sent me years ago about these people talking, had him on some radio show, and they just talked about the man behind his back, this, that, and the other. So why do you think I'm the way I am when people come at me the wrong fucking way? Because you don't know what it's like to live in this business. You don't know what this business does to people. You don't know what this business does to people when it takes your mind and take it to another place and you act this way, that way, in ways you can't possibly understand. But when all these other people that are in rehab, that are doing all these other things that I won't even discuss, oh, you have everyday empathy for them. Oh, it was this person's fault. Oh, it was that person's fault. But somebody like him, you want to laugh at him like a bitch behind his back. I ain't got no love for a sucker like you. None. None. And make sure you do it on social media, not in my face. Because I got enough money to afford an attorney. Yeah. So if I get in trouble, I got enough money to afford an attorney. Most people don't. Because ain't no bitch in me. Take that shit somewhere else. Either you're gonna dis either you're gonna respect people. You should have respect for people that then went out did what he can do in front of you to entertain you. But the world is so inverted now with mental bullshit. Like I said, it's like a fifth grader. It's easy to jump on board to try to excoriate people. But when they're gone, now you want to say, 
oh man, he was this, he was that, but you didn't do shit in the space. And you got the nerve to ask me, what the fuck did I do? Really? Yeah. So I just want to get that off my chest because I'm not the one. Not even much the one. I tell you right now, if it wasn't for my daughter and my ex, I'd be in a penitentiary right now for some of you bitch made pussies that like to come up and say dumb shit. I would be in a penitentiary right now. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that was my friend. At the end of the day, that was my friend. Regardless what kind of hustle he was at. Because you don't realize, man, when you up against it and the walls are closing in, you got to do whatever you got to do to try to get some scratch and try to get your bag. That's why he did some of the things he had to do. You don't excoriate it because you can't even understand it. Yeah. But be it as it may. We're going to send another. We're going to send another shout out to my boy, Mike, man. He wasn't a bad guy. He got into the wrestling business. And I haven't seen this business turn minds inside out. <laughs> well, yeah, it was it, Cross? Your favorite Stevie Ray and Vincent moment was a live thunder, and Vincent was left in charge, and Vincent got the table and hit his head on low ceiling. <laughs> I remember that one. That was a good one. But yeah, guys, so I just wanted to put that out there and let fans know wrestlers are human beings also, contrary to what you may think. Wrestlers are human beings also, and they go through shit. But you like to pick and choose. You dig? You like to pick and choose who you want to support and who you don't want to support. But at the end of the day, I got love for all wrestlers, whether they're on the independent circuit or whether they made it to the big time. Because see, I know what it takes to make it in this business. And sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. And sometimes it just is what it is. It is. But have a little respect for wrestlers, man. Don't laugh at them like the monkey in the cage. Just because you can. The shit ain't cool. But anyway, guys, let's get back to the show. Hold on. Let me cut Power my speak on. on. Bluetooth pairing. Bluetooth connected. It had to get my uh I had to get my uh had to get my speaker going there, guys. But hey, man. Um, like I was saying, y'all seen that smile on my face? Did you see the smile on my face? Y'all know what the smile all about. I ain't got to tell you. You know what the smile about. Another thing, man. Another one of my contemporaries, Sting, man. Y'all saw that? That he wrestled in his last match. Let's give a big shout out for Sting, man. I'm going to tell you something about Sting, man. He's always a good dude, man. I don't know how many times I was in the ring with this guy. But we had some good times also, brother. Never really hung out with Sting. You know, it's a lot of guys I never really hung out with. But locker room Sting had a lot of good conversations. In the ring Sting had a lot of good conversations. And, you know, good matches and stuff like that. But, uh, hey, man, he was around from the 80s till today. You got to give it up, brother. 
he's like the uh he's like the he's like fine wine man he's like fine wine the thing about sting man he didn't fall off that much you know i kind of call sting the lebron james of professional wrestling still going strong man after all these years and the only other athlete that i've ever seen go that long on top is lebron james he's the only other guy so shout out to sting out there doing his thing man um hey couldn't happen to a nicer guy and you know he lives in texas now too so i got to i got to give him a shout out for that for moving to texas <laughs> you know but y'all see the smile man you see the smile Y'all know what the smile about. Y'all want me to tell you why I'm smiling? You want me to tell you? Because my Pittsburgh Steelers have let the whole professional football world be known. Baby, we coming to win right now. At first, I was upset. They went and got Russell Wilson. Then some of my friends talked me into, well, Steve, he can't be no worse than the three guys that was on the team. Uh, Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, Mr. Biscuit. Then I got to thinking about it and go, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right about that. But I wanted them to get Justin Fields. But then Saturday afternoon, bombshell. They got Justin Fields also. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. With the new offensive coordinator. So y'all know right now, it's going to be on like a steam. They, it's no way the offense can look as bad as it looked this past season. And they still make the playoffs. Just imagine if they had a hat. Fields. Or Russell Wilson last year. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. That's why I got to smile, man. You know why I got to smile? Because now they're legit. They're legit. Now Matthew is saying, feels being able to sit behind and learn from Super Bowl winning quarterback and coach is a blessing. I got a better one for you, Matthew. What if he ain't sitting? Mm -hmm. What if he's playing and the Super Bowl winning quarterback is behind him? If I'm Justin Fields, I ain't coming nowhere to sit down. I'm coming to compete. Yeah. I'm coming to compete. Hey, hey, I ain't sit, I ain't sitting down, baby. He gonna have to beat me out because that's competition. Yeah. What if old Russ get out there and don't look like the Russ of old in about three or four games? Pull the trigger. Then I heard today that Mike Tomlin has told. Russell Wilson, he will be the starting quarterback. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Like most of my friends, listen to the radio, look at ESPN, all these different things, and listen to what they say and think that shit is gospel. This ain't gospel. I know Mike Tomlin. You know why? Hey, brother, Mike Tomlin looking at, hey, I'm trying to get to the promised land. I done had a little of that. I done been there twice. I want to go back again. And I want to be a competitor in the division. Steelers have ruled that division for the last 50 years, 47 years. Ruled it. Now, all of a sudden, I'm in Palookaville. I want to get out of Palookaville. How do I get out of Palookaville? Best players play. So don't give me this about Russell Wilson has been told he was going to be the starter. Hmm. All depends on what the owners say, though. 
Guy ain't getting paid but a million dollars. Guy ain't getting paid but a million dollars. It ain't like you're losing nothing if you're not starting. All his money coming from his old team, Denver Broncos. Oh, Matthew said the Chiefs resigned Chris. Should have should have resigned him last year. What's with that? The man won the Super Bowl for you single handedly. For all you idiots out there that think uh, quarterbacks win Super Bowls because they put a moniker out there. He won this game. He won that game like a damn baseball player. That's for the dumbest of the dumb. That is for the stupidest of the stupid. They have to dumb professional sports down these days so people that don't know very much about sports can go out and talk about it in a bar and stuff like that as if they actually know exactly what they're talking about. And you don't. You know, when they start making it like a, a quarterback is like a major league baseball pitcher. You just think about a major league baseball pitcher. He can get out there and strike you out. He can come up to the plate, hit a home run. And he can fucking throw the ball. You hit it. I catch and put your ass out. That's what a pitcher can do. Can a quarterback do that? No. You either three out, get your ass off the field. You don't punt the ball. You don't run back kicks. You don't play defensive back. That's why that moniker, he's six and six. Bullshit. Team is six and six. Just a little edification today. That from someone that knows. Just a little edification. Hey, Kathy. Kingpin. Daryl, what's going on, brother? I was looking at some of the people that's on. Uh... On. On. Uh... On the show that remember last week, guys, I was I brought a well that wasn't last week, a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, we brought a few people in on the show. Remember that? Like I said, um, well, I can add certain people, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Kron just said, um, I love these experts think because cousin went to Atlanta, that makes them jump ahead of everybody else. Well, you got to realize something, Kron. That's a very weak, that's a very weak division. They got a good team with a lot of good young players. Now, if you don't think Kirk Cousins is going to make a difference, Kron, let me ask you something. You don't think Kirk Cousins is going to make a difference? Have you seen Atlanta in the quarterback position the last few years? Are you kidding me? I'm Come on, brother. Did you see what they had last year? Come on, man. You, you got to be kidding. Experts saying Kirk Cousins is going to. In that division, well, last year the team went to the playoffs. No, no, that's the last year Brady was there. Went to the playoffs, winning eight games. Eight games? Anyway. Hey, brother, who's that out there, brother? Who am I talking to out there? Can I, who is that? Can you hear me, dog? I can't hear. Yeah. What's going on, brother? Who am I talking to? Bro, you, what was that? I, I thought I used to watch your broadcast. I just, just saw it live. I haven't been in, in a while. Okay, what's going on? You had a question for the show? No, it said join this, and I was like, hit the button. My bad. <laughs> no. 
These are people that want to say, John, these are people that want to join the show if they got a question. Oh, no, sorry. It just it prompted me, and I thought I was just – Oh, don't worry about me. I just love watching you, brother. Okay, man, I appreciate it, bro. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was uh, – that was uh, – someone popped in, but uh, – he didn't really get it. But anyway, God, yeah, it's been it's been trash, but it throws them it throws them interceptions at the at Rome. Look, look, bro. Let me enlighten you on something, Cron. How many games did Minnesota win in 2022? This me and you talking. Me and Cron. How many games did Minnesota win in 2022? Do you know? Because let me let you in on a little secret. Let me let you in on the... Hold on a second. Minnesota won 13 games last year. I mean, 2022. Okay? 13. And do you know, at the end of the year, the the other team, the other 17 teams that they, games they played, scored more points than the Minnesota Vikings did. And they won 13 games. Now, the reason I'm saying that is you said that Kirk Cousins throwing – interceptions at the wrong time what about the games he had to come back and win 11 of 13 games he had to come from behind to win all those games what about that it's easy what i'm saying is this it's easy to point out small things when it comes out to in one game that you watched but if you don't watch all 17 games you're kind of spitting in the wind since 2018, Kirk Cousins has thrown more touchdowns than any other quarterback in the league other than Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes. Did you know that? Did you know that? His interception to touchdown rate is not even close. Did you know that? What I'm trying to make point is make is this. When a man brings it, when a man is good at his job and he brings his resume and puts it on the table for all to see, especially GMs, owners, and stuff like that. You come in with a resume. You don't come in with, well, he throw interceptions at the most inopportune time. You look at the resume. Because the resume is tell you whether the guy can play or not, especially at a high level. That's why I got another, if I'm Kirk Cousins, that's why I got another $185 million. Yeah, I'm talking real football talk now. This ain't Dale or Chris. I'm talking real football, how the shit really works. Just being honest. You bring a resume to any job when you finish college. You ain't got no resume. You straight out of school. So how you going to get paid like everybody else that work at, at a building? I mean, at a business. But after a few years and you done built your resume up and now you can go somewhere and demand a little bit more money and they look at that and go, hmm, boy, I know what he's doing. Okay. Now you got something. That's how it works even in professional sports. Don't nobody get paid just because, like Denzel Washington said on training day, because he knows my first name. Don't work like that. Kirk Cousins ain't never been on a winning Super Bowl team. He never been on a Super Bowl team. He, been on a, he made teams better. Like I just said, Minnesota won 13 games 2022. 
what they look like last year without him. What they look like. They were like the temptations in search of a David Ruffin. See how the shit works? See how, you know, you can say certain things about certain people. But how you feel without me? Can you win without me? Uh, Kev say Kirk Cousins used to play for my rest game. He could never win a gig game. I'll give you an example, uh, Kev. Kirk Cousins, in a, in a, I'm looking at Kirk Cousins go against the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day, throw for 450 fucking yards, and still lost the fucking game. Kev, when are you going to talk about the sorry-ass defensive players on the Redskins back then? When are you going to talk about them pussies? The man put up numbers, went to the Pro Bowl, but yet. And when you're going to talk about Jay Gruden, a coach that they got from the Arena Football League, when are you going to talk about that bitch-made pussy? Yeah, let's talk about it. Couldn't win the big game. One person ain't never won a big game, Kev. If he has, tell me who it is. If 53 people on a team, 17, 18 practice squad guy, 30 coaches, that's 100 fucking people. And the only thing you can talk about is one of winning the big game. The man throw for 450 yards and still loses. How many, how many thousand yard running backs, Kev, since you know so much about football? How many thousand yard running backs did Kirk Cousins have in Washington? How many? How many? Right. None. So don't come on this show with that. Don't come on the show with that childish shit that you hear on AM radio. Don't do that, bro. That's not that ain't the kind of football we talk on this show or sports, period. We don't do the narratives that social media or AM radio or ESPN and all that stuff. If a man can't win the game, it's because the team ain't good enough. Just like last year, they went to the playoffs. The man put 21 points on board. But the other team scored 23, 24. If you got to outscore everybody all the time, chances are, if you're not a real top team, you're going to lose. You know, you don't get paid one hundred and eighty five million dollars by sitting at the fucking bus stop. And after all, you add up all of this man's money at the end of this contract, the man will be in a match over four hundred and twelve million dollars. Who the fuck makes that kind of money if you don't know what the hell you're doing? On what job? On what job do somebody make damn near a half a billion dollars? Sitting at the bus stop. Kidding me? What the hell y'all watching? So, when you compare his play to Matt Ryan's final few years and the two, two guys that they had last year, you really don't think the Atlanta Falcons going to be better? Really? The only thing I can say to that is this. He's coming off an Achilles. The first year the man finally had a great defense to play behind, he hurts his Achilles. Did you see Kirk Cousins' number before he hurt his Achilles? That joker was at an MVP. He was putting up MVP numbers. Do y'all watch football or y'all just listen to somebody to tell you the football? That's what I would like to know. Do you watch or do you just listen? I watch. I don't just listen. I watch. And I can actually interpret what I'm watching. You dig? I can interpret what I'm watching. So I don't need nobody to tell me what I already know. 
to see how I can get on the internet and look up stuff, add stuff up, put this together, put that together, put these percentages together, put those percentages together and see what's what. Then I can come out and talk about it. That way I'm not regurgitating somebody else's faux pas. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. He can't win the big game. Yeah, if I'm behind 32 to goddamn 10, no, it's hard to win the big game. Trust me out how people will hold a quarterback to a certain standard, but don't hold these other bitches that are getting paid millions of dollars to a standard too. Why is that? Because that's what television, AM radio, and all this shit then taught you what to do. Not to think for yourself. Now I go Dale, y'all. Dale said, I already know why you're happy. Stevie, that's damn good move. Which the Steelers has done. And Russell Wilson will play much better under Mike Tomlin. And then y'all will get Justin Fields nice. I'm not so sure about that, Dale. I'm not so sure. You might have. You might have. You might get. You must. Wilson might get cursed out on the sideline again. I don't know. <laughs> you might see him getting cursed out on the radio on me on the sideline again. I hope not. But Sean Payton said, "Man, somebody, 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 drop this fool for me." <laughs> like Denzel on training day. That's what Sean Payton said. Now I wasn't now, but uh, hey, wait a minute, y'all. The cat in the house. I thought I could bring him on. But it won't let me. Won't let me, cat. I don't know. Sean Payne said, man, somebody get this fool out of my face, man. I want him to drop back and hit it. He dropped back, run around, run over here, run over here, trying to go up the middle, all this other stuff. Got to do 26 touchdowns last year, and all of them was like 20, 20 of them was like pulling teeth. Yeah, I watched him. No, nothing in the middle of the field. Nothing where he used to drop back and hit it. Now, come on, bro. In the NF, in the AFC North, this is not the AFC West. Defense rules the AFC North. Defense rules. That is why I give Big Ben big props because he played when all of those teams had great defenses and he had to beat them all all the time. It was hard, but he did it. That is why a lot of times the man was hurt going into the playoffs and stuff like that because, brother, a person like Tom Brady back in the day, he couldn't have played in the NFC North. Good thing he was out there with the, the Jets and the Dolphins. And the Buffalo Bills, all those teams together didn't win 10 games every year. NFC North, bro, you got you to bring it, bro. Is Russell Wilson going to bring it? This is the NFC North. And your little pretty wife can't help you. With no hit songs. Does he ever have any hit songs that I will remember? Somebody tell me that. Does, does, does he ever have any hit songs that I would remember? I know she used to get on the war shows and dance and stuff like that. Great looking girl, great body, this, that, and the other. But sing a song. Sing something. What do you think about Big Henry? Join the Ravens. Oh, man, that, that's what I'm talking about. Running the ball in great defense. They all play like that. But when they got to step up and throw the ball, they can step up and throw it. That's, the, that's every team in the AFC North. That's every team. DTA say national anthem. 
Has the ever ever sing a national anthem, DT? I would like to know. If you guys know more than me, let me know. I ain't seen them. I would like to know if she can actually sing. I know she can dance. And I know a lot of this studio stuff can make a howling Siamese cat sound like they can sing. I, I just want to know. That's all. That's just me. What do I know? I don't listen to today's pop music. I don't because it's, it just doesn't have no soul, baby. You know, like Eddie Murphy in the movie Dream Girls. It's got to have soul. Music ain't got no soul no more. See, when I come up, even white folks had soul. Soul. People like Michael McDonald had soul. People like Bobby Caldwell had soul. Now somebody act like they got, they try to act like they got soul, man. That's just, it's, it's embarrassing. But see, youngsters don't know. They ain't got no soul, baby. They ain't got nothing. Even country country music had soul. Nowadays, country music got more soul than African American music. The hell's going on, bro? You know, wait a minute. Queen just said something, y'all. Let me see what she's saying. Sierra songs are cool. I like her songs, Power Promise off. and Speechless. I'm going to have to look that up, Queen. Promise and Speechless. Were those songs on the radio? Queen, I would like to know if those songs were on the radio or were they hits? Would they make Casey Kasem proud? No, I'm not just talking about a song. Somebody get an album out and then you look at the album and you listen to certain songs on there. I would just like to know. Uh, those are my top two. Yeah. They were on the radio. And she just, none the Queen's had them. <laughs> Casey, I don't think so. Wait a minute, man. I'm talking about somebody putting out hits. The hits. Put 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 putting on the hits. Seriously. I don't know any Sierra songs. I'm just saying Sierra, Rod Friedman, Luther. Okay. Uh B, you right. I remember that one. I remember that one, B. B says Sierra, Rod featuring Ludicus. You right. I remember that one, B. That's it. But I'm just saying, when they talk about her, nothing against the girl. I love her. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, she's a great performer. But I'm like, does she does she have a voice? I mean, a true voice, a true vocalist. Does she play a lot of different instruments and write her own music? Like a Taylor Swift. People can say what they want about Taylor Swift. That's talent, baby. Talent. How many instruments does a girl play? Girl writes her own songs. A true performer with them long legs. I like me some Taylor Swift. I really do. But I like Sierra too. But I'm just talking about talent. You know. You're talking about an actress, if, if, if a pro football player or baseball or basketball, whatever, if you're talking about a, they dating an actress, well, I want that actress to be the, in, in some movies, some blockbusters, at least one blockbuster, at least one that everybody can go to and go, oh, man, she was good in that. Oh, man, she was good in that. I would like to see that. You know what I'm talking about, Dale. I tell you, Swift and get down, boy. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Dante says, uh, "What's up, bro? Were you a fan of Jeannie Pepper back in 
Where do I know that fucking name from? I know that name, but I don't know who I know it from. Y'all know me. If somebody triggers something in my head, baby, my the old brain to go back and get it and bring it out. I'm not sure, Dantes, but I know that name. It'll come to me in a minute. Just let me. It's hard to think about it as I'm talking to the talking to everybody right now. Uh wait a minute. Cron just said porn, big duck. Oh, porn star? Perhaps. <laughs> I don't remember. You, I don't know. I probably, I, I probably did and don't remember. That must have been a long time ago. I don't remember, bro. Perhaps if I see if I see her face, I would probably know. I probably could tell you, but right now, no face is coming to my head. Even I bet you know that. Like I said, the name sounds familiar, but. I have to see a face. I don't know a lot of porn people by their names. I know their faces. You know. Uh, other than one of my buddies, I know him because he was in, he became a porn star. Guy, guy that I used to know back in the day, he became a porn star. But he didn't go by his real name in the in the porn movies, though. I know him. His name was uh his working name was Ray Victory. That was his working name. But I knew him before he got into the porn business. But he did very well. I don't know what happened to him, though. Uh, uh, Dale says, uh, great show, Steve. I'll be getting with you again soon. Okay, plus being music is booming off the charts here in Memphis. By the way, they play his music on the radio each week here. Ben told me that he was coming down here. He was going to call me when he come. I think he was going to be in Dallas or something like that. I ain't heard from Ben yet, Dale. I ain't heard from him. <laughs> he can play that Kelsey. He can play that Kelsey stick. Hey, I'm just saying, man. Taylor Swift is a very, very interesting young lady. Uh, very talented young lady, man. That's why I don't understand why people hate on her. I'm like, golly, this girl. I didn't really realize how big Taylor Swift was, man. I knew I always knew she was big, but I didn't know she was that big because I don't follow today's pop music. <laughs> I wish I did, but it's just hard for me to, it's just hard for me to stomach, you know. But the songs that I've heard from her, I like them. I'm not saying I buy them, but I listen to them, yeah.
Okay. I'm back now, CJ. I think I'm back. Apparently, the Wi-Fi went out, y'all. What's going on, Aaron? Apparently, uh, the Wi-Fi went out, but I think it's back on now. Uh, anybody can, uh, can anybody see me out there? If so, let me know. Okay, Matthew, I want to go back to uh, um, who was that? I want to go back to who asked me about uh, the pepper lady, the porn star. I'm trying to figure out, man, <laughs> why, why are you asking me about porn stars, bro? You know? Straight shooting with Stevie Ray. Holler at your boy. Hey, Mr. Stevie. This is Matthew. How's it going? What's up, Matthew? What's going on with you, bro? That's Matthew checking in. I don't know if you uh, talked about this already. What's that? Like, like I said, my internet went out. My internet just went, my internet just went out, too. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I'm all the way in Georgia, so I know it's not the same issue. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. You never know, man. You remember what happened to them phones uh, a couple of weeks ago, right? That's true. That was all over the country. Yeah. Yeah, they just let they they just letting the whole world know if I want to shut your ass down, I can shut you down. Hey, you just said a mouthful. You might be joking, but you just said a mouthful. Well, I take that back because I don't want them to come after me. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted to see if you had, uh, if you had talked about uh, Jason Kelsey, uh, Fletcher Cox, and Aaron Donald uh, retiring and what you uh, think about that. I don't know if you had touched on it already. Actually, I didn't, man. Uh, the Aaron Donald. Um, the Aaron Donald one is the one that surprised me more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Casey, uh, Kelsey been talking about it for a minute, two, you know. Years, two, three years, yeah. But Aaron Donald, I didn't see that at all. Well, Aaron Donald, he had, he had signed a three-year extension right. a couple years back. He was coming to his last year on his contract. You know, he had, he had talked about retiring after he won the Super Bowl. Right. So he, he considered that, and then you know I, I looked at his career. You know he, he's made about 150 million dollars. You know he, he's won the Super Bowl. He's right. Three defensive players of the year. Right. He won. He won rookie of the year. It's like, what more can you do at that point? Uh you're right, bro. I mean, I, you young, you're right, man. You're right, and some of these guys now, especially guys like him. That's been grinding for so long, brother. And I've pretty much done all I can do at a young age. What is Aaron now? 30, 31? 31, 32. And yeah. the oldest, 32. Right. So, you know, that's the one, you know, but like I said, I remember he was talking about it a couple of years ago. But hey, I you know, it is what it is, man. But when a guy stepped down, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not really surprising nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You know, when guys get cut. Yeah, that, yeah, that's surprising. I, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to, you know, play to a point where, you know, he, his game started falling off. But, you know, I was, I was looking at him. You know, he, he's married. He has four kids. You know, he doesn't have no baby mama drama this way or that way. Right. I'm pretty sure he just wants to, you know, enjoy the, you know, fruits of his labor. Yeah. You know, he, he's walking around healthy. He leaves the game healthy. And, and and that's the thing right there, man. Being able to enjoy your quality of life, you know, when you're going into your older years. He's still a young man, so he's still got young years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not like guys that get pushed out and they haven't saved their money, things of that nature, and right. going through and had right. and had fifty thousand injuries that's going to be plaguing them for the rest of their lives. You know. Yeah. He's had a pretty productive life in his football career and his personal career. 
I can see it, bro. Yeah, he's first ballot Hall of Famer. Once, once, once he added the Super Bowl on top of everything, it was what else is you could only win so many first team all pros, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like, and what are you proving at this point? You know, he lives in California, so they taking all his money from his paychecks anyway, right? Out of state taxes. But so, you got to realize a guy like him is going to have a hell of a pension. He's going to have a he's going to be able to live off his pension for the rest of his life. That's true. Think about that. Cuz he didn't put the wrench time in, bro. So, if OJ Simpson uh back in the time he played getting 30 35 mil a year. Yeah. What what is Donald going to get it? I mean, not a year, a month. I mean, not thirty-five million, but thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five thousand, yeah. yeah. Especially if he want to move to a to a state that doesn't have a state income tax. Yeah, like OJ did. Yeah, move to Florida. OJ said, "I'm getting out of here, baby. You ain't getting me." Ain't 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 that thirteen, fourteen, fifteen percent state income tax in California? <laughs> yeah, you get taxed twice. Yeah. You get taxed from the government, then you get taxed from the state. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's worth it to a lot of people. A lot of people love California, but I'm just yeah. saying, if you want to save your money, right. you, you know, go to Texas or Florida. Oh, Texas or Florida. Now, hey, this is my last question before I get offline. I don't know if you heard about your boy, Adrian Peterson. Um, no, I didn't, man. Wait a minute. I did hear something a couple of weeks ago Yeah. Uh, about a situation uh, that has something to do with that situation he was in here. Right. Uh, with Aaron Donald That's what it was. You're right. I do remember that now. But you know, like I said, I've taken the last couple of weeks off, so a lot of stuff kind of like went in one side of my head and came out the other. Yeah, I was hearing about that, bro. Yeah. So you know, he made over a hundred million in his career. You know, before tax, probably after tax, about fifty million. You know, sixty maybe at, at the most. Um, and then you know, he just went to the Super Bowl. Not not living here. Not Adrian. Not living, no, not living here. No, no, no. Adrian lives here in Houston, where I live. Yeah, but he's been living here for years. Yeah. But you got to realize he's from Texas. He's from Texas, yeah. Yeah, he's from Texas. Even though he went to uh, uh, college up there in uh, Oklahoma, but he's from here. Yeah. So, yeah, he's been living here for a long time. We did a, I did a couple of events with him. Yeah, so it's, it, you know, is it, it, it Eddie, Eddie News or uh, Eddie uh, Positive Affirmation you can give someone that's kind of going through this, telling people to save their money. Man, you know, this is the thing. Look for. This is the thing, and brother. This is the thing right here. The fucking sharks. The sharks in the business of ripping professional athletes off. Yeah. It's so many. People just don't know. That is why, you know, early in the show when I was talking about fans having respect for professional wrestlers. People just don't know what professional athletes go through, bro. Oh. They just don't know how many sharks are out there in the water. I'm talking sharks, real sharks, yeah. that look like they love you, and they all trying to rip your ass off. Because the agent just opened a new uh, uh, workout, you know, like a training facility here a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. You know where the athletes go and uh, you know, train and right, rehab, like that, yeah. all that kind of stuff. You know, like a performance center. Right, 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 right. right. And, and this, then that that blew up. I, I mean, I, I don't know if it blew up, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you was going through financial deal, how could that? How could you open up a place like that? You know. Right. So I don't know what the deal is on all that, but you know, all these places you got to get loans for. And then you got all these agents, management, this, that, and the other that said they're taking care of you. And in reality, I brother, they're are. not. They're not taking care of you, man. They still, most athletes that go through losing their money and stuff like that, they'll never admit it. But most of it, not all of it, but most of it 
if I was a betting man, was stolen from them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I remember, you know, being, being younger, and uh, Tim Duncan kind of went through a, a similar situation. I remember that. And it was, you know, a lot of times people try to make it, you know, well, these guys are, you know, spending money recklessly. And right. Tim Duncan was never that. He was never a flashy guy. Right. Change the car, none of that. His agent had stolen $20 million from him or something. It was something crazy. Right. Some astronomical number. You know, he had to go through litigation and, and sue and, and, you know, to try to get his money back as much of it as he could. And it's like, if that can happen to someone, you know, that's right. educated and, you know, and up on their finances and someone like Tim Duncan, some of these other guys that, you know, may not practice, you know, uh, sound financial investing, it can happen to them tenfold. Bruh. You know. Bruh. It, it's... It happens on a daily basis. As long as they're paying that money out, now you might have guys spending. Come on, man! How much money can you really spend on yeah. bullshit? On yeah. bullshit? On bullshit? Yeah. Think about that. How much? Non, like, I'm not. Maybe your first contract. You know what I'm saying? That really ain't that much. And like you said, you could be a state that be highly taxed, and you got to realize a lot of these guys don't have any write offs and stuff like that, other than your branding, right. your, other than branding yourself. Things of that nature. Yeah. How much of that money can you save? And then you have never been around money in your life. You really don't know what money is really about, other than to spend. If you've never done anything but play a sport and spend, you know, now you can spend money. That's all you know. That's all you know. Well, people think people want to be. They they think people come out of college, and the majority of them come out of college, and they got their wherewithal and the mindset of a Peyton Manning. No, they don't. Right. Exactly. It comes from money. Exactly. You know, and he comes from professional sports. So he was already, and his brother specializes in that shit. So he was already being set up before he ever went to college. You know, because you know his older brother takes care of him and Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Exactly. But what I'm saying is he went to school and studied this shit. You know what I'm saying? And like you say, your daddy come from, your daddy was a professional football player. You know, they didn't make millions and millions of dollars back in those days, but the money they did make was just like millions and millions of dollars back right, in those right. days. Yeah, considered the top rank. Right. So um, it's just different because you're going to have the right, it's hard to take advantage of the right kind of people because they got the right kind of people watching the sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, it, it had been, you know, like you said, it had already been a 20 year process by the time that Peyton you came into the, the NFL. Archie went through it, and Cooper, you know, was, was had, had went through, you know, his dealing. But, know, but see, this by the time Peyton and Eli came through, it was, you know, you couldn't. But see, this is this is what I'm talking about. Certain people in the league are untouchables. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you go and try to steal from Peyton Manning, they might find your ass dead somewhere. Yeah. Because he represents he represents the he represents the NFL. Right. So go steal from him if you want to, and watch what happens. But the regular guy, the guy nobody cares about, you see what I'm saying? Right. At the end of his 10, 12 year career, he might have made twenty million dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? He might have made twenty million, and you know, depending on what state he is and uh, uh, what he's been spending his money on, this, that, and the other. If he wasn't super, super smart, twenty million dollars ain't shit, bro. Twenty million dollars, especially if that, if that was before taxes. That's what I'm saying. Let's say he. His total salary was twenty million. Well, we already know forty percent of that is going to Uncle Sam. Yeah, and that's just federal. Yeah, that's just federal. And then, depending on what his lifestyle was, this, that, and the other, you can't live a quarterback lifestyle. I mean, a top quarterback lifestyle. Yeah, you know that that's going to get a thirty million dollar contract coming out of college. Right, right. You know. That is that is why I always get into these back and forth when people talk about Kirk Cousins. Right. You know, oh man, he ain't never won but one playoff game, this, that, and the other. Brother, look at the resume. The resume is 
And Dak Prescott, look at the resume. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dak, Dak played for the most famous team in the league. And if they don't win, they all blame it on him. But they don't think about it. what I'm saying is they don't hold these other jack offs to a fucking same, yeah. same, yeah, right. level as him. Or Jerry Jones, or the team structure. Like your boy, uh, the, the tight end that came from Dallas that came here to Houston and said, hey, man, playing for them is like being in the zoo. Now, who going to be the most right. zoo? Who going to be the biggest zoo attraction? The quarterback. Right. Right? right? So Dak Prescott was a fourth round draft choice, right? Right. Which means he got to play for the league minimum for a rookie at that position because the 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 first three draft choices are the only ones that get negotiated. Right. Not number four. Kirk Cousins was what? Number four. Number four. Yeah. Okay, so they don't get no money out the back. That's why when it comes to Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins, I say rob them. Put a, put a bunny and Clyde on their ass. <laughs> with a got with a damn tummy gun. I'm busting in here. Somebody better bag these groceries with money, and I'm getting the hell up out of here. Because you look at all the first round. Now, stick with me now. Look at all these first round draft choices. Top five guys got all the bags and didn't do shit. What about them? Come on, man. Sam Bradford didn't do anything. Come on, man. Tim Cow. Come on. Ryan Lee. I can with Eric uh Eric Meyer. Uh came out of Notre Dame. Uh we can do this all day long. We can do this all day long. So when people talk to me about Kirk Cousins and Dak Price, oh Dak should take a uh uh a pay less because of a hometown. Fuck that. Ain't no hometown, but my town. NFL says to not so long. You know, get that money out of them, get that money out of them. That's what I'm saying. But you didn't want to pay me? Kirk Cousins started for three years at Michigan State. And was a captain. Yep. And do you know this? The Shanahan's wanted to draft him before RG3. Did you know that? You know, Dak Prescott was a son of a gun yeah. at, uh, Mississippi State. at Mississippi State. Yeah. 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 And then they talk about, oh, he got a DWI. Maybe that's why he dropped. What? <laughs> All these junkies and drunks in the NFL? Oh, that's going to drop him to a fourth round? Not, I can see if he had been a second. You dig? I can see if he had been a second. Right. Dak, Dak had them at number one one time, didn't he? Yep. And I ain't worth nothing to the fourth round draft charts. Like I'm I'm meeting I'm just some old throw the garbage out dishwater. So I'm like Kirk Cousins. I'm going I'm like like Denzel in training day. I'm gonna get that money. I'm gonna get that money. You know, yeah. Cause I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't believe you gonna shoot me. Get your money. Oh, dog. Every time Kirk Cousins get a contract, I say good for him. Yeah. And like you, like all the quarterbacks you just got through naming, they all multi-millionaires. Yeah. While I'm eating bologna sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed. You know, Dak Prescott that had his time in his career with all these guys with the name. Oh, come on, man. Hell, look at the guy. Look, Carson Wentz was drafted over him. Carson Wentz, he was number two overall. Jerry Goffman, Jerry number one that draft. Okay. Come on, man. Yep. You're a backup. Carson Wentz, is he still in the league? I think uh, he playing for somebody. He was on somebody's, he was on somebody's team last year that went to playoffs. I can't remember. It might have been the Lions. I can't remember. He's on the Rams last year. Rams. Okay, I knew he was on somebody. Yeah. Get your money because I'm like this. You earned it. You can say what you want about, oh, this playoff game. He ain't did this. He ain't did He won a Super Bowl. Well, shit. Last time I looked, ain't but four guys won Super Bowls in the last 
eight, nine, eight years. Yep. And one of them retired. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Forget about the Super Bowls and all that. Look at the resume. When I put my resume on your desk, it shows how many touchdowns I have made. It showed that I got a 70% uh, pa passing percentage. You know, they shows you my QBR is with the top people, the top 10 uh, quarterbacks and they money in the NFL. So when you negotiate, that's what you look at. Yep. So that means, yes, 50 mil mm, sounds about right. Sounds about right. When you sell your house, when you sell your house, you sell your house for what the market is in your area, right or wrong. That's right. Ain't that what white folks always say? That's why we don't want no black folks moving in here. Or some Mexican people. They they bring they bring the value down. Yeah. Well, I well, I had some people move in my neighborhood, man, made my house go down. So now I know what they're talking about, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother story. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. The market value. Yeah. So same thing happened with you know Chris Jones. And like, like you said, they should have paid him last year, but they had to pay him this year. Right. So these had to these had to come out for money this year. Chris Jones just paid him last year. Yeah. But but you know it is it is what it is. But like I said, bro. In this game, bro, we see we see that so many times. Everything we use alluding to about people losing money because some people they ain't never been around money. They come from adverse conditions, you know, yeah. and things of that nature, and come from single parent homes, all of this kind of stuff. And then everybody want these people, but just you now you're becoming an instant millionaire. Some of them, not all, yeah. and you want them to have the same mentality as a, as a person that knows the whole structure of what money is about. Right. Well, you can't learn that shit overnight, bro. Right, right. And you, it, it, you know, I tell, I tell anybody to be given, you know, uh, $5 million at the age of 19, 20 years old and, and be told to figure out what to do with it. Right. Like the entire world knows that you've been given this money. And watch the leeches, the sharks, like you said, you know, the, the women, you know. Right. But like I said, man, it ain't nothing wrong with having fun, but the sharks. Because if you got $20 million, yeah. you can't spend that unless you're buying homes, investing in businesses and stuff like that. You can't spend that because the interest on that money is you can live off that. Yeah. But like, like, if you got it in the right place, but I'm just saying, but if you want to go live like a millionaire, that's going to cost you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was yeah, I remember when Mar Warren Moon played right here in Houston, Texas. Houston. Yeah. Boys, yeah. I remember some friends of mine that Warren Moon lived in a neighborhood close to theirs. And I remember us going by his house. Yep. It was a regular fucking neighborhood. Yep, yep. I'm not lying. Yep. But he had a fence around it. You dig? But it was in a it wasn't one of these exclusive gated communities. Right. Because back in those days, you're talking about the 80s. Back in those yeah. days, uh football players wasn't revered as big time celebrities like they are now. See what I'm saying? Right. Right, right, right. You, know, I mean, you everybody knew who you were, but it was a lot of athletes like that. You know what I'm saying? People knew who you right. were, but then didn't nobody jock you or you needed bodyguards. Right. You know what I'm saying? Stuff. Right, right, I swear right. to God. Right. You would see uh, like uh Lewis Lloyd used to play for the Rockets. And uh 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 who who was the other guy used to play for the Rockets? Hell, we used to work, they, was, they used to work out with us in the gym. Yeah, Ralph Sampson, those type of guys. No, no, not Ralph. Uh it was it was Lewis, and it was like three of them. It was Lewis, uh, what's his name? His son plays for Golden State right now. Oh, bro, I can't, I can't remember. Oh, shit, it, I would know it if I wasn't trying to think of it. But what I'm saying is, these guys coming to the gym, it wasn't like, oh man, that's so and so. You know, he, you know, that's you know, Louis Law was starting guard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, nobody looked at him like that. Right. You know, nobody. 
you know, uh, pro wrestlers come in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Nobody fuck with them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could be all kind of, I mean, baseball players come in the gym that, you know, play with the Astros. And it's like, guy just trying to get his workout on. You know what I'm saying? But nobody walking up to him, asking for a picture and all this kind of shit. So I'm just saying that's the difference between the athlete of yesterday and the athlete of today. They lived normal lives. Right, right. If they wanted to. They lived normal lives. No, Nobody jocked them. Like, you see these guys out in the clubs, all kind of stuff. Like, it wasn't nothing. Right. You know, and me, I'm just a nobody. Right. I'm just a would-be wrestler in the 90s. Mitchell. And hell, I couldn't even go to the mall with my kid. Right, right. Mitchell Wiggins is what you were thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mitch Wiggins. Yep. Mitch, he's a real cool dude, bro. Real cool dude. Yep. And uh, you used to always say, Mitch, you got to get some, man, you got to put some weight on there. You got to get some muscles, man. You're too skinny. You know, yep. I'm trying, man. I'm trying, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They didn't have no per personal trainers and all this kind of shit. They, they didn't have that. Right. It's you know? Now. I know. But what I'm saying is, now imagine those guys, if they had been making that kind of money back in those days. I mean, they were just regular guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm quite sure certain people made money back. Because I remember when Magic Johnson signed a $3 million deal. That was a big deal. Yeah. In like 1981. Dog, come on. So now you see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the sharks. Yeah. Brother, they're there. They're there, and they rob these guys, man. And that's why ain't nobody worrying about how much money coming out of the you know the, the NFL and you know NBA giving these guys because eventually it's all going back to the very people that gave it to them anyway. That's what I always say. How true it is. How true it is, uh, I don't know. Right. But that's just Hey, the boy's That's smart. The largest contract in sports history. Me and me and Vince talked about it on the Black and White uh, podcast uh, about a month ago. We talked about it then. I was like, "That's the smartest move I ever heard of in my life." Yeah. That's the smartest move I ever heard of in my life. Because you got to realize how much money he would already made. Yeah, yeah. And he don't live here. So, he, he don't live here. And he gets all. He got fifty thousand endorsements, bro. He even got some endorsements here in the States. And he got a billion of them back in Japan. Yeah. So the dude's smart, bro. I'm going to pull this bunny and climb. Ah, I think I want to retire. Hey, man, what about that 700? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> what about that 700? Should be by mm, damn near a billion now with interest. Exactly. <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, he stayed he stayed in the same city, you know, the LA Angels, you know, didn't didn't have to, you know, move cities. He said the taxes here is, you know, 13, 14 percent. I'm waiting till last I retire. So y'all don't tax this money. Yeah, y'all ain't finna rob me. I already know how you Americans are. I'm gonna go back to go back to Japan and y'all wire me my money. Make make sure it's in my account. <laughs> Oh man, that was crazy, man. By the fact that he's plays baseball though, and he's not one of these uh big name guys of baseball, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I didn't make big news. Right. That's right. why it was kind of hush hush, you know. Yeah. If it had been your uh Aaron Judge or something like that. Oh man. If it hadn't been an American, like you said, it would be yeah. Quiet, yeah, uh, right. Booming, you know, you, you see him walking down the street, you probably wouldn't even know him unless he had a, a, a baseball hat on. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, he, 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 he's doing it the right way. Hey, man, shit. I can't do nothing but pray for him, bro. I wish it was me. Better him than everybody else, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he made the right decision. Whoever was in his ear, like, you know, you know when yeah. he retired, they get that much. I heard. Two million a year and the endorsement. Right. Yeah, hey, like I say, I, I homeboy, like I don't need very much to live on. Shit, don't don't need don't need much to live on. Retirement <laughs> is longer than the plan career. So he did the right thing. That's uh, base. 
All right, buddy. Appreciate it, man. All right, brother. All right. Peace. Okay, everyone. We're going to get ready to get out of here, man. Good conversation there. And uh, whenever any of you guys want to call into the show, 832-243-4428. 832-243-4428, man. That's what it's about. And that's what we do. And uh, wait a minute. Who's that asking me? Baron? Stevie, why did you let Booker rip you off when you were the first broadcaster to enter a Raw Rumble? Man, I don't give a fuck about fucking Raw Rumble, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Byron. I don't care about things like that, but I appreciate the question, though. You know. Cron, you say Ray Victory died in 2016 in Denmark. God damn, I didn't know that, bro. But yeah, man, that's a friend of mine, uh, Cron. He was a good friend of mine. I used to bodyguard him and his uh, buddies that were buddies of mine. They used to all be uh, male dancers here in town. I used to uh, work the clubs with them uh, back in those days, man. Yeah, where well, the club would don't let no guys in, and they would go in there and do their dick dancing. And uh, he was one of those guys, man. Yeah. Well, I knew all of those guys, man. They were all good guys. It was years ago, man. Man, I didn't know he had died, though. But, man, they get on those drugs. I don't know if it was a drug thing, but, man, those guys, start messing with, they started messing with drugs even back then in those days. But, hey, brother, I've never been one of those drug guys, but a lot of people do them. But, you know, in that porn game, man, from what it – because I've met a lot of the – I met a lot of the porn girls that used to come around wrestling all the time. They tell you some stories, man. But you know, it is what it is, man. You know, and I appreciate that, Baron. But uh, you know, but hey guys out there on our Facebook, we're gonna get out of here and I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. But um well, yeah, guys. Power on. Bluetooth pairing. We're going to call it a night. Bluetooth connected. Appreciate everybody tagging along again, man. Like I said, man, I had a few things to talk about. And we got them out. And uh, like I said, I had to take a hiatus. A sabbatical. Whichever word you want to use. I think it was more of a sabbatical than a hiatus. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Baron, I know you just messed with me. But hey, man, sorry about the technical difficulties. That is what happens when you do a live show. But at the end of the day, we got back on. They told me I had some new Wi-Fi. It was going to be super strong. I didn't see it tonight. Well, let's hope tomorrow night is better. That's what we'll hope. For my mans that called in, for everybody that chimed in, everybody on Facebook, everybody on Twitch, everybody on YouTube, this is your boy. And if you don't be anything else, you know to always, and I said always, be one. Peace.